one of the countless billions of galaxies in the universe lies a medium-sized star. And one of its satellites, a green and insignificant planet, is now dead. Hey everybody, uh, welcome to the very special season two finale of Verse the World with Matt and Danny. I'm Matt. And I'm Danny. Um, we've been doing abnormal episodes for the last like four or five episodes kind of getting off structure and things we're going to continue that here um uh, we've got no main topic or anything we're just going to reminisce take a look back talk about some of the things we've enjoyed about doing season two and then uh move forward and look at what we're doing next and what we hope we can do with season three if that comes about so yeah uh should be a pretty fun episode, pretty laid back episode, but uh Yeah. Um I'm trying to think uh I'm trying to recap I was just trying to recap cuz I'm like, well we should kind of talk about maybe our favorite episodes and ep- guests we've had on. Yeah. Season weirdly enough, season 1 cuz we were getting our feet wet, I feel like I rem- are, I remember more. Mm. And even though we hit a good stride on season 2 because of that, it's harder for me to actually pick out and be like, oh, here's all the episodes we did. But we had way more episodes, too. Yeah, well, not by a huge margin. I think this will actually be episode 12. Oh, so there's only two more. Only two more, and then the two update episodes. So it's been almost the same length. But I'm kind of disappointed that we didn't um, end this in season two on a part one. And have Todd back on some other topic. Because <laughs> that was my favorite thing between the two seasons was we just didn't make anything for like... How long? It was like s- several months. Yeah, like we, probably close to six months. Yeah. And yeah. then we ended on part one. <laughs> and, <laughs> so, and we really built up what episode two is going to be. Which really, like funnily, I think that contributed to our big... Like we thought it, we were going to have to start over with season two and kind of... Yeah rebuild a following and stuff and when we launched that first episode that's actually i think it's our third third highest downloaded uh episode and it gave us our biggest peak (laughs) of of downloads at one time um and i'm gonna i'm gonna chalk that up a to todd being one of our best guests Mm. and uh b to it being a part two (laughs) your scooby-doo story though was actually pretty good Oh, my, my Scooby-Doo nightmare that will yeah, so that uh, never actually, leave me. I think that might have contributed to it. That probably got the word spread around. And that was a really fun episode. That was before we got the new setup figured out, and we were really we had the we're little, still winging it. Yeah, yeah, because Eric wasn't even there. We didn't even have him to help do anything. So it was just me. I would hook my computer up. We kind of like we devolved at the start of season two because the first season we had Eric because Eric was living with me, and we, so we had him monitoring the sound and we just had a snowball bike in the middle of a table and it was perfectly you know he would make sure we were all the right distance away from it and then when season two started it was just me coming over to to danny's apartment and setting it was setting up my my crappy pc and just plugging in the mic setting it on the coffee table and forgetting it was there while we did the podcast most of the time (laughs) yeah and uh that one specifically well that was so part part two was the first episode and yeah your family at one point came and knocked on the door and you opened it in the <laughs> yeah. middle of that episode. <laughs> and then they refused to leave and we just had to leave the episode rolling. Oh. And then I had to sit them in the back and they were like talking the whole time. And I, I would have felt bad telling them like, Hey, pipe down, keep it quiet. We're trying to do an episode. <laughs> Speaking of, <laughs> of shitty quality. Shitty quality. I don't know if anyone heard that. Um, the competence uh, like my confidence level has maintained the sense that I forgot to go to the bathroom before the podcast as usual. And now my watch <laughs> alarm went off. Yeah. Well, you forgot to go to the bathroom and then we started this episode once and accidentally completely derailed into a 30. It'll like, be a bonus podcast. Rant. Yeah. yeah. It'll be coming out at some point. Uh, and then we've had to re like, we had to reset everything, let everyone take a bathroom break and then start this episode two more times. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, but that that first episode was really really fun, um, and it was. I think what I enjoyed about this season was one we we'd grown over the course of the first season. We got a lot more comfortable and stuff, right? Um, but then this season we interviewed more people that we didn't know at all, um, 
more people that we kind of didn't know how the episode was going to go. And so yeah. I think we've gotten a little bit more comfortable tackling new topics and new people. Yeah, um, for sure. Which, I, yeah, I think, I think we're like more relaxed, like in general and more comfortable. Um, like the, I mean, I think those first couple podcasts we did on season two, part of it was the situation where I just had that snowball mic on the coffee table. But like, I remember when we had Cole and Rob on and just kind of like, we were just kind of sitting around as if we would be anyway, like talking about, you know, <laughs> creativity and stuff. And like, I think we felt a little less obligated to try so hard to seem professional. Mm. Like we were like, okay, well getting the guest on and tackling the subjects respectfully is the professional part. We don't have to act like we're politicians talking about it. We yeah. can be more relaxed and joke around, which is probably the biggest difference from season one. And that was something we talked about beforehand was like, well, maybe we could loosen up a little bit and, you know, cause we, I think, I think we censored ourselves a little bit in the first season where we were, we wouldn't be as jokey. Like we would yeah, try definitely. to try not to be funny mm. because we wanted to keep, keep on, on task. And I'm like, well, that kind of, you know, we, maybe we loosened up over time in the first season too, but season two is definitely like, well, that kind of like downplays the whole, our personalities by not being humorous. Cause that's what we do. We talk about serious subjects and then make jokes about them. Right. And I think that's also what makes us more comfortable talking about serious subjects in real life as compared to like when we first started versus the world, um, it was a little nerve wracking. I feel like, especially once we started releasing episodes, because we we tackled these really serious issues, and we're n neither of us is really people who like to assume that we we know things. Mm -hmm. Like we both do a lot of research and read a lot and like explore ideas a lot, but we we really don't like to assume that we actually are authorities on any any topic even things that we're passionate about like i don't like to think that i'm an authority on film and i don't think you like to think that you're an authority on like comedy um and i think that put weird pressure on us that we couldn't joke about the serious issues we were talking about afterwards yeah and kind of acknowledge the fact that at the end of the day we're still dumb dumbs right um and i think that's made this season a lot more comfortable as as a host um, yeah and I think it's led to us getting comfortable where we were able to tackle, tackle um, some more fun topics. And well, even serious ones. I think the Pyramid Scheme episode, I actually think that a lot was, of people enjoyed that. Even though it was, yeah, it's kind of funny because we kind of, it wasn't, it was like a mixture of a serious and fun topic because to me it's a kind of a fun topic. And the reason I like that one is because it's, it's kind of bipartisan. It's n It doesn't have to do, like... The only people who are going to be mad are people who were part of like MLMs, but yeah. but other than that, it's something that like is just part of life that everyone kind of knows about. Like mm -hmm. everyone has someone try to sell them something, or and we has tried been to be roped very in. fair to them. Like I was talking with one of our one of our um, our very I don't know how to say it, not our big fan, but uh, a very consistent vocal fan of the show. Mm -hmm. uh, we were talking about it today. I think you were there actually, but. She really liked the fact that it was very clear we weren't attacking the people who were doing I wanted to reiterate that as much as I could because it was a little bit partly on my head, like presented in a way of like, <sighs> Matt's about to like rip a new one. And it was like, I was like, no, like I really, that really does come, that whole episode came from a place of not of anger or trying to belittle people at all. It really was like seeing people get roped into things that didn't make their lives better at all and made their lives worse yeah. and trying to draw attention to it. And I probably should, we did, I almost, one thing I would have changed probably about that episode. Cause I didn't think about it until later was like, instead of calling it pyramid schemes versus the world and continuing to say pyramid scheme, probably should have just said multi-level marketing. Yeah. Um, that could have been, but I, but I, I mean, I kind of digress on that because and it you really, address that. Like you, you really made it, it yeah. clear I tried to that show that. that's what those are were and why the term has changed yeah and why one's a legal term and one's not that was a fun one um what's your, do you have a favorite episode of season two yeah well i mean i guess you said i remember you saying your favorite episode at one point now that i'm thinking about it because you mentioned the eric one you really yeah liked. that's Is what that, i was gonna say okay i i really enjoyed doing the episode with eric uh one because i think he he uh was one of our best guests like he he was just really good at uh, addressing questions on the spot. 
and having a lot to say about them. You can tell he's somebody who he's not like simulating his thinking about those topics. Like he's someone who very much is like a master of the topics he wants to address and like what he knows he really knows. You don't get a sense from, from Eric that it's, he's like the opposite of like the NPC meme. It's like he, you don't get a sense that he's regurgitating things. Like everything he says is well thought out and you feel like it's his opinion and that he's really weighed it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And that episode was also fun because I've known Eric for, a really long time but i've kind of always thought of him as like your younger brother so that's mm-hmm. how i it's weird you interact with people's family members yeah. not as people you could know but as their family members right like you call my mom how, mrs matt's mom how dare you caleb <laughs> i forgot eric had a mic <laughs> how dare you <laughs> hey buddy uh Sorry to be talking about you right in front of your face. I, I know it's a little weird. Also, our setup's a little different because usually we can make eye contact with Eric, but from he's where I'm behind for a half I'm, wall. Yeah, he's behind a wall right now. So from where <laughs> I'm at, I forgot that he was even there almost. <laughs> but no, I mean it's like you interact with yeah, like a like I interact with your mom. Like I could probably get to know her just as a person. Like I've known her long enough. But you, I don't know. You kind of come into the situation like I'm interacting he, with this person's right. mom. Um, like people do that with my dad all the time, but and, and then they're like uncomfortable because I I talk to him like we're just two guys. Um, yeah. But then it can make people uncomfortable because they're trying to interact with him as somebody's dad. Right. Um. But like getting to a point with Eric where, and I think that episode really did it where I got to know so much about what he thinks about the world and like mm-hmm. how he thinks about things. Um. That basically since then we've just had like several really interesting discussions yeah where we're not having them under any kind of pretext of oh you're matt's little brother so like what how are you how's how's being matt's little Mm -hmm. brother or anything like that it's just like oh you're a really cool guy like let's talk about this we actually had like a three-hour discussion last night that was just absolutely insane and like one of those like pothead style conversations till it wasn't until three in the morning but those kind of conversations and it was one of the like funnest talks i'd had in like three years so that yeah. episode was just yeah i don't for me, suck, one of the favorite. suck eric's d too much but uh yeah i think i think the reason why that was a good episode is um and why he's just an interesting person to hear from is i think we say this a lot is like he kind of reminds us of how we were at that age but he's just a lot more advanced uh and then also He's very articulate. He's much, he's he, like I, probably my biggest flaw. Um, and you probably notice on the podcast is I, I have, uh, I kind of have topics or subjects or ideas in mind, and I'm not the best at articulating the ideas. And Eric is such a great person to listen to because he's, he's, he can articulate those ideas very well. And the so, way that he questions people, he's challenged me a lot to be more careful when I'm, when I'm explaining a topic. Mm-hmm. Um, because it'll be very precise in the way he asks for more detail if he doesn't understand what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. What you're saying is he can be a little bit of an a-hole sometimes. Um, he can be a huge, huge dick. I think... Do you, I, th- you think he's just sitting over there, like, blushing, like, really hard, like a little anime girl? I like, have no idea. <laughs> I can't see him. Um, probably. I, uh, I think my favorite episode... The pyramid scheme one was fun because it was the one episode where I felt the most informed about what I was talking about. You came ready. You were like going to war. Like <laughs> I was disappointed. My only disappointment with the Garfield episode, it was such a thrill to finally let loose how much that pisses yeah. me off. But the only thing was like I should have taken a day. Like my argument is about the stupidity of using that title uh-huh. but not using the story from the yeah. book. But I could have done a whole day of researching. Um, what company funded it, how it got turned into a movie. Like, I could have done all that right. and done as good as you did with the Pyramid Scheme one. Well, maybe tell of Two Kitties Part 2. <sighs> um, maybe a whole miniseries. You could do, like, a doc... We could do, like, a versatile documentary about the movie and its oh, <laughs> and everything. Uh, that could be fun. Um, I think... Um, I was trying to think about it, maybe. Um, so that one was a lot of fun to do because I felt the most prepared for it. So it was like one of the few times where I was like, oh, I feel like I can be totally outspoken here, completely about a subject. And I mean, I still hedged a little bit and was like, look, like I might be getting some of this wrong. Maybe I don't quite understand. Like we talked about Arbon a lot. And I, you know, that was, a, that was just one that I used as an example because it was new and popping up. 
but I didn't have as much information about it as I did Mary Kay or something. So, so, um, but I think my favorite episode as far as just really enjoying it, um, was maybe the Colin Rob episode. Um, oh, really? And I think it's because, uh, I like, I really think, so that was four different people just explaining what creativity means to them. Mm. And I don't remember exactly how what our idea for what the episode was going to be if it was just like how are we create like i don't remember even what the topic was i think what we were trying to do with that episode was i assumed we were all going to have different processes as creative people of how we created the things that we enjoyed doing and when we started talking we ended up realizing while we had different ways of explaining it and and certain uniquenesses we all had the same process. We all related in how we go about creating things. Right, which maybe should have been boring, but it was interesting because it was like we all had these different interpretations or translations of the same process. Um, and that was just what, and that was a good one because it was earlier on where I had the mic on the table. I think one, I think Rob was like sitting on the, just like sitting on the floor. Like it was very casual, like, and we were just sitting around and I forgot the mic was there after a while. Which is, you know, probably the best thing. One of the best things you can have happen in a podcast is you forget the mics there because you're having such a great conversation. Um, so I really like that, but I'm, I'm a little biased too. Like Cole was our first guest on the first season, I think. Yeah. And um, that was just such a good like, uh, like I, I don't know. I think he's I I enjoy talking to him because he's he's so measured. But like, even though we probably disagree on a lot of things, like, uh, you know, he's got a good point of view. I've always really enjoyed Cole a lot, even just in me and him started hanging out more and more before he moved, um, Mm -hmm. here recently. Um, and me and him know, like we addressed a couple times in conversation. We figured out how, how much we're, uh, different on like political ideas and things like Mm -hmm. that. But he's one of the few people who's who's so far opposite me who's willing to engage with me directly. And yeah. I'm usually willing to listen to whatever he has to say about a political issue because he might know something I don't. Um, that we were able to, I think, get a lot of new perspective from each other. Yeah, that's the best thing. If you can, I feel like you can disagree on everything. The one thing you can try to agree on is like, is the, fr- the, f- like, the freedom to have free discussion and like, yeah, and that was a little bit redundant, but like being able, to, I, I really think that idea of like, he could just dismiss you for mm-hmm. your views and you could dismiss him for his views, but you both connect on some level where it's like, you can have a great conversation and, and those are level, some of the best th- conversations you can have. That level is the big Les show. That's where we really connect. You guys connect over an animated through Flash, Flash, uh, or through Microsoft Paint. Paint. Yeah. yeah. One of the greatest shows ever. If you're sitting around and you're thinking to myself, I need about six more hours of content in my life, <laughs> and I hope it's no shittily animated that. and uh, Australian, look up The Big Les Show on YouTube. You will not be disappointed. And uh, thanks to Liz Loeffler for putting me onto that. There's some, that girl, she just... She always suggests to me the weirdest things, and I'm like, I don't want to look at it because I know it's going to be insane. But if I go looking at it... You don't come back. I don't come back. She she just knows my my tells or my tricks or whatever, <laughs> and she knows exactly what's going to tickle my funny bone. <laughs> well... <laughs> Um, uh, we need to get her on the show at some point. That would be that cool. Would be, that would be really fun. That would be a trip. Go, we'd have to go to California, but then we could do like plan a whole trip out and have, you know... Do one with her, do one with Sterling, because he's out there. Oh, yeah. Did we ever have Sterling on it as a guest? We still have not. And That's now so he weird. lives in L.A. He's such a, like, in I think we even were discussing part doing of our a, wrestling, a wrestling episode with him. I was just talking, yeah, I was just talking about that today. Like, it'd be fun to do something with wrestling. Um, yeah, so. So that's our favorites. Those are our favorites. Um, we kind of touched on it already. The next thing we were going to talk about is like how things have changed over the course of Mm -hmm. the season. We've talked about it a bit. Um, technically I think even just this episode we've hit finally having a very comfortable recording setup. Like it's been getting better and better, but we kind of, the last several episodes were either recording in my kitchen, Eric's basement, uh, or your house. But now that we have these, these mic arms, it's like we're, 
we're one step away from just being a full on like comfortable recording booth. Yeah. Well, we got, yeah, I got these new microphone stands, um, that we're using right now that are like really adjustable and nice. Like it's cause otherwise any other episodes we've done before with the nice mics, we are using mic stands and we're around a table and I'm just, you're, we're just sitting there like kind of you hunched know, over, hunched over trying, trying to make twiddling. sure we're talking into it. You're like banging the, the thing on the table and all that. So this is really nice cause we can casually sit down. Um, and then it's it's a it's a cool setup. So like, that's definitely probably the biggest thing is like our quality shifting kind of back and forth a little bit. Um, but yeah, now here on the season finale is probably the most comfortable setup we've had. And we've had we like the production's gotten better. Like Eric's just been doing a stellar job, um, like editing and like helping us get things out uh, quicker. Um, and he's been doing some fun edits here and there that I've really enjoyed where we'll like make a joke about the editing, not anything major, but like we did that episode where as the episode was ending, we were making a bunch of jokes and I demanded that he play one of his songs. And I went in that episode was up. I went back to listen to it and just cut to the end because I wanted to see how he did it. And he addressed every single thing we told him to do oh, really? in the way he put the song in. And I thought that was really fun. Yeah. Well, you have to have a good sense of humor if you have to re-listen to us over and over again while you're editing. That he must gets be a so nightmare. bored sometimes, like while he while we're talking, like Garfield, the Tale of Two Kitties. He was like, I'm surprised I'm he didn't sure he was leave the, solitaire the room. Yeah, he just started playing games on his phone and stuff, and looked like, <laughs> "Fuck this! This is I can't believe I'm wasting two hours of my life for this." He did look visibly pissed on that episode. <laughs> we were I, I was actually pissed on that episode. <laughs> <laughs> like what, we had wasted his whole like, fucking day. Yeah, no, because I had waited all day for you guys to show up. None of you said shit about it or anything. Well, because yeah, I and didn't I know. had gotten like that was. A I surprise. thought you were going to be there a lot earlier, and I had stayed up really late, so I got like no sleep. And then you show up, and you talked about Garfield for fucking like an hour. And then, <laughs> I didn't. Yeah, well, we didn't know what it was going to be. I tried to keep sh- that a secret, but without letting you guys know, I, I guessed was keeping it. A I secret. did end up guessing it, and it was there. It was right before we started recording because uh, Kayla, or uh, Eric has a had a cat in the basement. And I walked by the litter box and saw the cat, and I just instantly like my eyes widened, and I was like, oh, "Tell it to kitties." We were at because we I were, knew it was the second to last. We were at Walmart last night going through the five dollar bin, and there was a there was there was a, a cute gal working there standing behind us. That we were we were shooting the shit about a bunch of movies and making a bunch of dumb jokes, and she was audibly laughing as she was trying to stock stuff. And at one point, Eric just pulls up a DVD and goes, oh. And then he goes, oh, God. And, like, tries to throw it, and I quickly snatched it. <laughs> and it was a double pack of Garfield and a Garfield and Tale of Two Kitties. And, he, and I was like, are you seeing this shit? And he's like, yes, that's why I tried to bury it. And he, like, almost walked away. He tried to hide it as far as away from you as he could. I almost bought it and, like, was like, fuck whatever we were watching tonight. We're watching Garfield and Tale of Two Kitties. And just like force him and Evan to watch it with me. I feel like I've seen Tale of Two Kitties more recently than the original. I don't remember the original movie, and I barely remember Tale of Two Kitties. Tale of Two Kitties, from what I, I remember, ne- was one of those just everything about it is so lazy. Scenes are lazy, shots are lazy. That you're just like, it's this just was the most like half ass. I know. Movie. I just have never. I don't know that anyone's ever intentionally watched a, one of those Garfield movies. I intentionally watched Garfield when it first came out. That was one of those oh. kid movies that there was like a lot of promotion for. There was giant inflatable Garfields in movie theaters yeah, and stuff. Yeah, and everyone loves Garfield, I guess. Except Garfield. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so on the topic of like growth over the season, like is there anything else we want to talk about? I mean, we've kind of been doing some each interesting stuff just recently. We're dabbling in marketing, and that's one of those things. Like when we started with podcasting, audio – is the one thing we know nothing about. Um, and so we've had yes. to grow like a lot, but kind of stumbling forward as complete idiots and then eventually getting a handle on it. Yeah. And now we're kind of doing that with marketing and promotion a little bit. Well, the website, I don't think we've talked about that on the podcast yet. Oh, no, we haven't. Should yeah. we talk about yeah. that? I think that's a good time to. Well, uh, don't want to toot my own horn, but I decided to toot. like... Boop, 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 doot, doot. Me. Um, <laughs> oh God. We could edit that out, right? <laughs> um, 
Is that the third time you hit your head on that wall from laughing? <laughs> yeah, actually, the back of my head. This is gonna sound bad. The back of my head has almost no sensitivity anymore because I whack. Well, I've my head wondered on the back because I've noticed you now. That's like the third time you hit your head on it, but you have no reaction to it. I just hear the loud noise, and I'm like, I guess he didn't hit his head. No, like I just there's uh. no sensitivity anymore. Like I don't have a like a headboard on my bed usually. Um, so if I move my pillows around too much, like I'll end up slamming my head into the wall really hard. And there's no, you're not feeling it? Not, no, I've just gotten used to it at this point. It freaks people out sometimes, not necessarily in bed, uh, but like I'll, <laughs> you know, I'll be hanging out with somebody and I'll smack my head against whatever's behind me pretty yeah. hard. And then they're, they'll like stop and be like, oh my God, are you okay? And I'm like, what? And I have to like remind myself, oh, I got hit in the head. That's supposed yeah. to hurt. I'm wondering why you've been getting dumber throughout the episodes. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so sorry. What, oh, the website. You want oh, to talk the website, about the website? Yeah. Uh, I did. I did take about a week, like, of pretty much all of my productive time outside of work that I should have been using getting ready for film school, <laughs> and, <Right>. uh, <laughs> and built and and built as a website. I mean, I used Wix, so it's not like I did anything amazing. I had to. I had templates and things you didn't to like use. Learn code or anything? But... Yeah, I didn't learn hashtag learn to code. Oh God, this episode is going to get demonetized now. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I like spent a while and I tried to figure out the best way to do it and, uh, put us together. What I like, if I can toot my own horn, I think is a pretty visually pleasing little yeah. website. It's pretty crazy what you can do with the, with Wix is what I was surprised with. Yeah. So you'd kind of told me about it, but then the actual site is like, it, it just looks like a website. Like, yeah, I think Wix probably, you know. Is like like you can't tell it's a template. Like yeah, it just if you looks don't like, see the Wix thing and someone just showed you the website, you wouldn't be like, uh, "What is this like?" You know, Walmart version of a website. Yeah, my dad was actually. I sent him the link and told him, you know, whenever you get home, open this on the desktop because it looks nicer on the desktop. There's some mobile yeah. problems. I was surprised that it works though on the mobile so well too because I've looked at it on both and it yeah. does look great on mobile. Like there's not. I mean, yeah, I'm it's sure, just not as like visually well laid out. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I, I told him to open it, and he re- responded to me, like, quite a while later, and it was like, dude, kick ass. Like, he was, like, really pumped. But I didn't realize I'd never told him about, like, I'd never shown him Burger Boys, and I usually, whenever I work on a film project, I send it to my dad because he, he really likes watching them. So he ended up watching Burger Boys last week, <laughs> Burger oh, yeah. Boys 2018, and was, like, live chatting me um, all of his all of his thoughts on it and was talking about, like, how I could never show it to my mom because... Uh, Cause I'm the blasphemous text, phone call texting and driving and calling and driving. And then the, the, also the blasphemous prayer, um, at the end and that, the number yeah. of times we, we, we swear, uh, that was a joke and talk about three ways that, well, I, I'll get derailed here. So if, if you want to talk more about the website, yeah. So, well, if you want to check it out, uh, it's going to be in the link of uh, the link will be in the description of this episode and probably all future episodes we're going to start linking all the handles and everything so you can follow us um i don't have the exact url so just check in the description but if you go to our website we've actually set it up where you can find all of our social links through it um instagram facebook you can contact us through gmail you can find our bit shoot channel you can find our youtube channel you can watch our best videos live on on the website um, and you can follow like our Instagram feed and everything live right there on the website. So it's a really great little hub where you can follow all of our content. You can stream the podcasts for free right from the website. So you don't have to download any apps or anything. If you want to, you can also find, uh, this is also kind of big news to celebrate the end of the season. Uh, we decided to experiment with merch a little bit. Um, we're not really like expecting anything from it, but we just decided to go ahead and, uh, design a couple pieces of merchandise and just have them out there for anybody who's interested. You can find our merch store, um, right there from the website. There's a couple really cool pieces. I ordered a t-shirt, uh, so we're hoping to get that in see what it looks like. Um, there's also like sweaters and stuff, coffee mugs. You can get little stickers, um, just all kinds of neat little stuff, but I would highly recommend the Verse the World beach towel. Um, if you're a big <laughs> fan of the show and you want to support us, 
it's the summer. This is the time. Summertime's in, baby. Gotta yeah. get that towel, beach towel. You gotta do it now. Get that that hot beach body you got, and uh, take it right out to the beach. And when people start checking you out, you know, just roll over into the sand a little bit, and then they'll be checking us out. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's so, what it's yeah. all about. That website, I think, is is really fun. Also for us, like creatively, because. We've been working on a lot of projects and stuff, and we're we're kind of trying to learn how to do more things ourselves and mm-hmm. build stuff ourselves um, and find ways to link stuff. And another cool thing about that is that we're able to support our friend's podcast, uh, T- Ty Newmeyer's podcast, uh, which you're a part of and Evan's a part of. Three's mm-hmm. a podcast. Yeah, um, we link that directly on our homepage as which well will as be, it's kind of in hiatus right now but we'll probably relaunch sometime within the next month which we can talk more about later in the episode as far as future projects okay so and then we also have uh the only current episode of air capital bro show uh a show that should never be found by anyone because it will get us in a lot of trouble i keep forgetting to delete that soundcloud (laughs) are you not gonna upload the other episodes i will probably eventually but i'm waiting for the relaunch okay all right so um so yeah check that out peruse around a little bit uh tell your friends show it to your grandmother uh make it her homepage, uh so you can boost our site ratings and everything like that um outside of that i think that pr- pretty much covers mm. like how we've grown um so let's move on to what we're working on next and let's let's start with you uh what things do you want to talk about that are on the horizon for Matt uh, Pull the Diskowski? Um, for Matt Poltergeist Outski? For Matt um, polluting the the outside of the sky ski. For Matt Putin was right ski. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, for um, so I I have um it, things have been very hectic over the last couple months so there's been more planning on my end than than any execution yet most of that is because i basically somehow convinced <laughs> one of my friends to move from an hour away and my other friend to move from another state <laughs> <laughs> to come here <laughs> uh, well it's something we talked about for a while but um and you you convinced your brother to move back in with i you. also you convinced like, my brother i promise yeah. this time i won't i won't kick you in the closet i, I, yeah. I won't shit on you i won't ruin your life right i'll be well, good to you this time two out of three probably but i can guarantee <laughs> um i uh no but uh so anyway I'm i'm working on a lot of things but um it's a lot in the planning phase so over the next month i'll basically be rolling out some new things i did if anyone's interested and maybe we could put this as a link um i try not to self-promote too much but i i did just kind of re relaunch and kind of revamp my youtube channel um under the name pabloopski and i'm gonna kind of be going for a new style and kind of a new sense of comedy that is very particular um and it's kind of hard to explain but i did sort of make a pilot type episode i guess you could call it like a pilot episode like it's almost like a demonstration of what the channel will be like um and maybe we could link that uh if anyone's interested but if it's totally unappealing and uninteresting that's okay it won't hurt my feelings i understand that that's sort of the, <laughs> i watched that it looks. i thought it was really good um but more to come on that um i, I have some ideas for uh videos but i Right now, we're kind of there's a lot of things going on with uh, you know, Danny's about to move, and there's a lot of things going on, so uh, I'm kind of have that a little bit on the back burner at the moment. But basically, probably by the end of August, uh, I'll have everything sorted to work out. So, more YouTube videos for me. Um, as far as podcasting, we mentioned a little bit before, Three's a Podcast is my friend Ty's podcast that he's been doing, and We've been doing it over, we've done it over Xbox Live for a lot of its entirety, which was really weird. That was just the way we did it. Um, it started off with us playing video games and somehow turned into a podcast. And then um, we eventually started using Discord, but, you know, and doing, trying different variations. But he's been wanting to move to Kansas for a while. So we thought it'd be a good opportunity as we've kind of been collecting this equipment for a podcast anyway. 
um, to kind of use to share the resources. So come probably the end of August, we'll be relaunching that podcast um, and maybe make maybe uh, kind of doing a, a video portion of that. Kind of depends on what he wants to do with it. And then um, last bit of whoring out would probably be uh, Air Capital Bro Show, which which Caleb mentioned. We it's been an idea floating around for a while, which it's not really an idea. It's sort of like the Seinfeld thing of it's a show about nothing. Yeah. Like it's a podcast that doesn't have a like a purpose, a, a point, thing. anything. Yeah, it's really just uh just guys sitting around and just talking about whatever comes to mind. There's no pre planning um or anything. So but we that's something that I've been really passionate about and working on and kind of coming up with some ideas of of how that could work and kind of getting a cool setup for it. So yeah, you can expect like a lot of that stuff. Um, and I, I'd like to say, I mean, out of all the podcasts I've, I've helped with threes of podcasts from time to time. Um, I've had, like I've carried a lot of, of different hats for this show and helped uh, with like one or two others. I, I would say air capital bro show from a podcasting standpoint is the funnest to record i don't know whether it's a pleasurable listening experience or not <laughs> but it's so much fun because we just put on mics i don't know what the new format's going to look like but what we've always done in the past is just we just say the most facetious bullshit that comes yeah. to mind and we just start making stuff up and trying to put each other on the spot yes and yeah. part of part of the relaunch idea is to make it so that the audience is in on the joke and, mm -hmm. and maybe some people don't get it, but like one of the reasons why I never released a lot of the episodes in the past was we just got, we would just say some really offensive and egregious stuff. And it, because we're so good at, we kind of have such a good chemistry and we're able to just roll off of each other. I was like, I don't know that anyone knows that we're kind of putting <laughs> an act on you. here. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't know if anyone understands that like we're bullshitting with each other and we're specifically trying to like, talk like we really are like egging each other on in like the worst way <laughs> yeah so yeah. so that's not how we even talk like on our own exactly yeah. yeah yeah you think you're you'd be listening to this podcast under the idea of like this is what guys talk about when they're alone and it's like not really like it's really like it, us taking that idea and exaggerating it yeah uh, but it is like a lot of fun because of the fact that it's just full like sort of improv and um we just all mesh well together so so yeah so anyway um Obviously, I know we have like kind of more versus the like stuff to talk about as far as black films and stuff. But what about uh, you? Um, Obviously, yeah. you got film school, but well, I'm making the big move um, a week from Wednesday. So by the time this episode goes up, I may already be in Florida. Um, That's going... crazy. Next Wednesday, right? Yeah, so you have like a week and a half. Yeah. Whoa! Like I'm getting, I'm getting that kind of like sick feeling you get before a big change. It's been yeah. really disorienting the last week. I, it's like in my mind, I'm, I'm like in the middle of a transition in a weird way where I don't belong anywhere. Um, you get your your foot. You got one foot out the door and one foot here. Yeah. Yeah, and it's like trying not to rush the last little bit of time I have here, but I also need to get ready for everything that's going to happen there. Yeah. Uh, so it's like weird. It's like trying to like enjoy what little time I have left with friends and family before a big move where I might not get to see a bunch of you guys for a long time, mm -hmm. and like that's kind of tough. Like it's kind of hit me, and it's it's been kind of sad. Yeah. Um, but then it's also like it's hard to utilize that time well when there's a rush to try and make sure everything's in place so I have success uh, when I land out there. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, that's been really rough. Not in a bad way or anything. Just... I feel like I almost feel like not maybe for you and for, for you know, your friends and family, it's like it almost – for me, I almost feel like it's not going to feel real until you're like, well – see ya like i really yeah. it just feels so surreal that it's happening so quick like it's crazy to think it's only in a couple of weeks well and i think for a lot of my friends it's like i've never really left or went anywhere and That's when i true, do yeah. i take people with me and um, it's always like relatively nearby you yeah know? it's always it's accessible not, it's not such a unaccessible thing so yeah i've never been out of touch with like you or evan for very long mm -hmm. yeah it's um, weird for a decade so yeah, it's going to be weird, man. Um, hopefully it doesn't 
feel like too long. Like I don't, I definitely don't want my time mm-hmm. there to be rushed or anything, but I'm just hoping it doesn't. I think we have such, I, I think that there's just going to be so much going on that it will be like a really quick couple of years. Yeah. That's what it seems like. Probably. Yeah. So yeah. Anyways, I mean, to get off that kind of melancholy trail, <laughs> uh, when I get there, I've actually been working, I've been putting verse the world uh, first whenever I have time for creative projects, but here and there I've managed to put a new channel together. I haven't launched any content, uh, but I, I do have one video ready to go when I launch it, and then I'm hoping to get one one more done before I actually launch the channel. Um, but I'm doing a new channel called Danny Voiles Presents. Um, I'll probably link it um, as well. Basically, I just decided... Um, I haven't really used my Captain Canada moniker in a very long time, and it, I also feel like I've outgrown it. But one thing I've always liked about what we've done with various projects, YouTube channels and stuff like that, is it it seems to be chapters in our lives. Like mm-hmm. you can talk about the Black Eyes Films years, and not only is the content that they're reflective of who we are at the time, but it reminds us of a lot of certain experiences we had in life yeah. and stuff. And then, like, straight for days is, like, a whole different chapter in our life. And you can see when important people in our, our life come in or out. Um, right. So I've always liked that. And I decided to kind of be more intentional with this chapter and go, I'm about to do this thing that's going to be one of the most important growing experiences in my life for film, which is what I'm passionate about. And to try and use that same thing to capture it and kind of have, like, a a video journal, which I'm not going to be doing vlogging necessarily or anything like that, but I just want to capture my film school years. Um, And I also want to post all of my film school work there. Um, So it's going to be a great place to follow me if anyone's interested in what I'm doing film wise, but it probably won't be a great place to follow me if you're wanting more of, I don't know, like my comedy necessarily hey guys me and matt are going to the dog and shake yeah <laughs> hey guys watch me come over here and uh talk about how i think hitler did nothing wrong there will hey. be le- less of that <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> um but it'll still be fun i'm gonna do a lot of personal projects on there and like a lot of uh, funny projects as well but then also i'll start to release some of my actual genuine uh work uh my actual short films and things like that yeah. that are a little bit more serious from time to time so that's something I'm really, really excited uh, about, and I'm going to build a a website for that as well so people can find me easier and stuff. Um, we're also, we just filmed a big project. Um, yeah. Uh, a look back on our first YouTube channel, which will be 10 years old next year, which is kind of weird to think about. Um, and it was when our friendship started. So we decided to get together and film like a little mini documentary about that. And we just did that yesterday. So we're going to spend the next couple months when we have free time editing that together. Yeah. Um, it was a real trip. We went back to the school that we went to school slash church, which I think here we can say, uh, was a cult (laughs) and a very weird experience growing up. Yeah. It, it, it was just a weird yeah, it was a weird situation. So it was weird because we were doing the documentary. So there's kind of nostalgia for the project, but then there just started being like also just childhood trauma and trauma bad and nostalgia. memories yeah, and bad stuff memories. started coming up. I started getting um, like a weird feeling by the end, like like uh, I want to get out of here before I start regressing yeah. <laughs> into an idiot. You kind of started to near the end. Yeah, it was weird. But that might have been the gas leak we found. <laughs> yeah, there was that. Oh, I need to tell them that that was I don't, definitely a gas leak. Yeah, I don't know for sure, but. It smelt like it, and when when I was lightheaded, and as soon as I mentioned it, and you guys both were like, "Yeah, like I feel the same thing." Yeah, I f- like I felt like there was a film on my tongue when I got out of that basement. Yeah, but anyway, we <laughs> we we filmed the documentary there, um, and it was a lot of fun. It was really interesting. We all interviewed each other. We like took turns. Like uh, Danny interviewed me, Evan interviewed Danny, and I interviewed Evan. 
And uh, it was really cool going through each interview because we asked the same questions to all the three of us, and then each of us added some things here and there. But we all ended up having different answers to some of the things, which I didn't expect. Yeah. So I actually think it'll be a really interesting like look back on the different perspectives and seeing like different sides of the Black Eyes film's origin. So it'll be a cool thing, like even you know even just for us. Yeah, which that'll probably end up being released on the Verse the World. Mm-hmm. channel i imagine because that's probably the best place for yeah. it yeah and then we also i think we've already mentioned it on the show a couple times but we we decided to if anyone's watched our our little short film about burger boys when we went to uh columbia missouri we went yeah. again and we made a much bigger trip out of it it's a much i'd say it's a much better production like in the sense that the first time we were doing the trip Actually, the first time we brought cameras for a totally different reason. It wasn't even supposed to be a thing about the trip. Do you remember? It was another project. What was the project? It was called American Singles. People forget this. Oh, yeah. We had a whole it wasn't, show we Yeah, forgot. it wasn't about the trip necessarily. We were just like, this will be good footage. And that's a little bit why some, like... It's a little it's out a of little context. disjointed and a little odd, like, because it was a little more relaxed. It was just us. Whereas I feel like... And it's still a fun, really funny video for us just kind of scrapping together the videos and making something of it like a year after we did it. Yeah. But now Burger Boys 2019, which, you know, I don't know when we'll release, but like for, for, I'm, you I'm already started soon. editing it. And it was like, I feel like we were all on as far as comedy. Like we had cameras ready constantly. Oh, yeah. So I really feel like it'll be a really cool one. I'm so excited for that. That one should be a treat. Um I'm probably one tenth of the way through the footage. What we have is really, really yeah. solid. What's already edited, it's going to take us a while to get it done. Um, but I'm hoping maybe we can get it out during the break before before uh-huh. the comeback. Um, yeah, so those are both like really fun projects to look forward to. Um, and I think that's it for for up and coming. Well, yeah, and for my stuff. Um, so do you want to get into talking about the future and what we're different hopes and dreams we have for the show going forward? I mean, maybe we should just address the fact, are we going to do another season? I don't think we've ever asked each that, other directly. I think that would be better um, because I wouldn't want to, uh, I wouldn't want, because we don't, well, because the real truth of it is, is that it's a little bit, we don't exactly know what the situation is going to be when you right. get to Florida. So the the idea would be, like, we basically would be forced to do it long distance, so our whole setup would have to change, and we have to figure that out. But you know um, what they say, uh, long, distance makes the heart grow fonder. Long okay. distance relationships always work? Yeah. Okay. It's written in stone. No, they, they rarely work, so the, <laughs> the show's probably going to fall apart, but... <laughs> If we do manage to make it work over long yeah. distance for two years, what that means is when we get back together, oh baby, is it going to be sweet? The sexual tension is going to be, oh, Jesus Christ, man! I, I read that totally wrong. What the um, hell? We can cut that out, right? Um, I don't even think Eric's paying attention anymore. He probably fell asleep. I think he's asleep. I don't even see his head. He just woke <laughs> up. <laughs> <laughs> Eric just woke up. Uh, no, uh, I was going to say, yeah, uh, you're probably right. And I think that, I guess the main thing to say um, would be that it will just be, where it'll just be a little bit different because it, 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 it won't be as common. Try. Yeah, but uh, yeah, we're definitely trying and it's just, it, it probably... Because it kind of depends on how busy you are there and how what we're doing here. But for it being such a simple thing, because like we were talking about, at the end of the day, worst case scenario, you can get on Discord for, for 45 minutes and yeah, have an if, episode. If we can, and it, so, if there may be less content. We may have to dial it back to once a month or something. Yeah. I'm going to push for as much as I can manage. Uh, but... I don't see a good reason why we shouldn't be able to at least do, like, an episode a month. Right, or have just some, like, even if we can't get it specifically scheduled, just, oh, we have time, like, do you want to try to do this or, you know, have some stuff. And I think in the meantime, well, first of all, we actually, like, do have several things that we are working on so that we can release during that break, too. That's a good thing to mention, like, we will have... 
content that will be coming out. Yeah, so this place isn't going to go vacant. We have one one unfortunate episode that will definitely be released that was kind of an accident uh, while we were trying to record this. Um, and then it's almost also, a tragedy. It's almost a tragedy. The thing is, is though, I don't. I want to release it because we made some good points, and yeah. I think we got to some new territory with a couple serious issues that we think about and discuss on the show from time to time. Yeah, but it it's not a fun episode. It's a very serious episode. Um, but also, we have uh, an idea that we've been toying with since uh, season one of doing b-side material we often get together and start recording uh before we start an episode Mm -hmm. and just record the bullshit that we're talking and sometimes we end up getting some really insane stuff on mic that is really funny so we're thinking about putting some of that together um and getting that out there for you guys Mm -hmm. to keep you entertained over the break yeah and then i think one thing that's probably been happening it seems like with verse the world over this last season are you rubbing your lips on the mic my mustache, sorry. It's very odd. Um, so I, get, I, I don't know. I get my lips are getting more and more chapped as we've been doing this episode. I don't know what's happening. I'm thirsty. Yeah, you are, boy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I uh, well, I was gonna say, uh, I desperately. De- I feel like we've been accidentally or intentionally moving versus the world into more of a brand thing than just the podcast. Yeah. With the launch, like with Burger Boys and all this stuff, it's more like it's sort of like a verse the world presents type thing where it's like we're doing these different things. So I'm sure there's some content that we could do, even separate, like um, even being separated, maybe yeah. make some more video content. Um, and so there's uh, there's plenty of ideas we're toying with. I guess the reason I'm being so hesitant is I don't want to be like this is exactly what we're doing, right? And, and, then and, then it, dis- and it never up. happens. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, let's talk about what we hope we can like what we want to grow if we get to do another season uh if we get to do like a season three one of the things i want to do we started the show we were like we were probably a little too gung-ho um but i think season one and two have actually been really good experimental seasons uh Mm -hmm. we've experimented a lot we've gotten comfortable in a couple areas and i think season three is probably going to be where we really solidify a form uh a a structure to the show of like what we're doing um that's what i see going forward um but i really want to we started with the idea like there's serious issues and sometimes people are unwilling to look at them and and talk about them and we need to do that like we need to talk about real things but then as we were doing that, we were like, yeah, but there's also the problem of we're idiots and mm-hmm. we're not really masters of any specific domain. So we, we're not authorities on any issues. But I mean, that's yeah. why the whole point of Verse the World is that we get other people who are more informed than us on certain topics to come in and talk about the topics to us. And then we just try and grapple with it and keep up with it. Uh, that's always the goal. Mm-hmm. And um, I think... I think over the course of season two, we've got a lot better at discussing ideas with people, like more varied ideas and that kind of stuff. And also, we've kind of decided we want to dial it back a little bit on really intense stuff. I think we'll address serious issues, like social, political issues from time to time. But there's a lot more. We want to explore a lot more topics. You and me have kind of discussed that a bit. A lot more topics that we have interests in. Um and yeah. I, I think it'll be fun to start kind of like we discussed on uh before the show getting to this place of like no topic is off topic um making making conversation or views uh unexpressible actually creates bigger problems it like blocks people out of the conversation and we want I think one of the things I want to do with season 3 is more and more um but more interesting, unique opinions on, more varied opinions on, and you and me just see if we can keep up with them. And yeah. Tackle the problem, even if the person is, is talking about crazy ideas or crazy solutions to problems that we don't agree with, see what we can agree on about. Is there an actual problem present here that's not being addressed and those kinds of things? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a good way to put it. And... um yeah, I think we've gotten a lot better at being able to 
do that probably. I think at first we put a lot of pressure on guests, mm-hmm. which is like, okay, go. You know, you'd be well just behind the scenes stuff since we were taught reminiscing. Like, it's surprising how many guests we've had that get super shy when the mic gets on. Yeah, like, and you could probably tell on some of the episodes, and you wouldn't always expect it because you're talking because we always are sitting around, you know, bullshitting with the the guests before we start, and it's very casual and cool. And then the mic, he, you know, the mic gets hot, and all of a sudden, like, they're like panicky. And I think, um, I feel like definitely we've gotten better at talking to guests and approaching. I feel like I've gotten better at approaching issues, and part of that is we do have like people who listen now. Like obviously someone's yeah. listening to this right now. Like we were just going over some of. We just hit seven hundred downloads. Oh yeah, big big milestone, seven hundred downloads. Yeah, because it seems like just you know not that long ago at all that we were talking about five hundred. Yeah. So, um, and I think for me, I when I we first were starting, it was just this way of like. I can talk about these political things and say my political opinions in this weird space where I feel like I can say this stuff. Um, and then as we went on, I'm like, oh, people are listening to this and I should probably be careful about how I'm presenting myself and, you know, how I'm interacting with the ideas, which is really good because I think it's made me reflect in my own personal life. How am I interacting with these ideas? Am yeah. I just well, I'm right about this opinion, and so everyone else needs to hear it. It's like now I'm more approaching it. Um, I'm approaching it from a different perspective. So, Yeah, and I I think um, another thing is you and me have started toying with the idea of there's certain topics that sometimes we want to talk about and we don't have, we can't find a guest for, um, but you or, you or I or both are pretty knowledgeable about it. And I think going into season three, we're going to experiment a little bit more with doing more episodes where we uh, present a topic that mm-hmm. the listeners might might not know a lot about. Yeah. And we kind of did this early on um, with the episode on the shadow, but that was a yeah. topic where we were not really prepared to be the ones to explain the concept. Um, but I think going forward, like the pyramid scheme episode, there will be times where we we just do. Um, almost an essay on a topic yeah, that people I think that could be really cool. might not, it might not be common knowledge. Like clearly we're not the experts on it or anything, but we know enough about it that we could probably present the idea yeah. and it might help further discussion in other episodes. Yeah. And those are kind of, yeah. And I think, and I think that would mean leaning more into things like, pyramid schemes which are something that maybe people don't know much about the origin or mlms or how the companies work or how they get in trouble like there's a like those like kind of you know those sort of little pockets of of humanity or pockets of america that are just like really interesting to explore i think that's where that would be we'd be probably uh, i imagine going into more topics like that yeah instead think- of being super broad because we've done that I mean, we talk a lot about like we've done. We did an episode on abortion, which is fine, and I think we actually ended up getting into some interesting philosophical concepts in the episode. But there's times where it's like you look back on it and go, "Like, man, did we know what we were talking about?" And it's such a serious subject that everyone's talking about. People who are way more knowledgeable than us are talking about. Right. Um, well, and I think also like being able to explain some of the behavioral traps that people get caught in that end up. Like, we've gotten caught in them, but we also are observing a lot, uh, like simulated thinking, um, yeah. uh, expressing opinions that aren't your own, those kinds of things. Mm-hmm. We At this point, we're knowledgeable enough we could present exactly how the process works and yeah. how you can work to avoid that when you are having your discussions. Right, Which yeah. is something I think we could address as well. And, like, on the whole pyramid scheme, like, I would really be interested in explaining at some point because I think it would be... Um, beneficial in certain discussions and something listeners might find interesting. I know a lot about the um, odds and ends of the film industry and how a lot of things that people think are um, trends in film or uh, attempts at um, breaching social issues in films aren't at all related to social issues or uh, popularity issues. They're completely um, industry standards or contractually obligated moves. And like common audience or normal audiences just are so unaware of it that they end up things that they're 
passionate about uh, that they should have a problem with in film, they they turn a blind eye to, and then they end up adopting opinions that they would normally disagree with if it were coming to them in any medium other than film. Mm. Um, we, we, you and me talked at one point about the whole issue of like people accepting Tolkienization because they see it as diversity, but it's really not diversity to try and help uh, minority groups in a lot of these situations. It's actually trying to sell you a product that already works uh, on a white audience, and so they just recast it rather than writing an original character, an original property for minorities. Um, and little things like that I think we could present on that you and me are actually very knowledgeable on. Well, in yeah. that situation, me. But. Right, but that's a good example of maybe more areas of, of tackling uh, of particular interest. And there probably would just be a lot more episodes, probably a lot less episodes with guests just because of the situation of being long distance, yeah. I imagine. And we so. want to get guests. We definitely do. Uh, but season three, it's hard to tell right now, but it actually might be devoid of guests just because we'll already mm-hmm. have to sync up audio from two different sources. Um and yeah. bringing in a third person might not work well. But if we can get it sorted, like, that is still a major part of the show. Right. But I think, like, for me, maybe um, you think about the idea of, like, when you're building a company or something, you need a mission statement. Um, I think when we started Verse the World, the idea was something like, and you can tell me what, like, your perception of this is. I think Verse the World was something like, there's important discussions that need to be had, and there's a lot of polarization going on on a lot of topics. We should do something to be part of generating conversation that might lead to understanding and solutions. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think now it's the same thing, but I think both you and me agree on this concept of like the more things you go out and tackle in the world and get a grip on and master rather than letting yourself be you know, pushed around by a lot of outside influences that you don't understand, the more you expand your understanding of the world and reality and the more you tackle, like the more there is of you, like the more of a force you are to be reckoned with and the harder it is to be like for people to push you around or political parties to push you around or ideologies to push you around. And I think for me, like I would like to move more in the direction of how do we help other people learn how to expand themselves like that's really what we need is we need individuals to be more self-guided self-motivated self-aware um and self-teaching like that's how we're going to overcome a a lot of these problems of people being so biased and everything being so politicized is it's really like groupthink and um forced education those kinds of things and it's it's kind of devaluing of the self and the individual and i think if Mm -hmm. we can get i think if we can get our audience like involved in that process then um maybe this becomes an even more worthwhile venture yeah but i don't know what do you think about that well i didn't really thought too much um about a mission statement i guess um i guess i'm open to the evolution of it um I think that's a good idea. I don't feel personally like I can contribute to that very much just because I'm not any kind of guru to tell <laughs> someone like how, you know, this is how you can improve your life. Um, uh, but I don't know. I think probably maybe we'll, we will end up filling out roles more in Versus the World where yeah. maybe you will kind of take on more of that philosophical thing. And I would rather just my personally me move into a direction of, maybe just being the lighter end of it mm. and um you know because versus the world yeah i think it started off that way and then when we get into things like dreams and stuff i just got to the point where i started realizing the episodes i enjoy the most are just the things i'm interested in yeah and just discussing things i'm interested in more than any idea of like changing something or or trying to get any points across more than i am I'm, i realized through versus the world and the guests that we have like even though I'm not really religious at all and certainly don't know much about Catholicism, it's really interesting hearing someone who does know a lot about it who's open to having the discussion. Mm. And um, so for me, I'm just interested in people. And um, and that doesn't necessarily mean a guest. It can just mean the top, like 
you know, talking about certain topics and stuff. So there's probably some reconciliation between the, those two different things that mm. we're talking about. But, uh, but yeah, so that's, that's part of, I guess, figuring out, um, figuring that out and how maybe, maybe we end up kind of having different roles within the podcast. Yeah. Well, and that'll be interesting. Cause I think we're right at a stage where we're like, the show's definitely going to develop in some major ways. Um, but it's kind of hard to see what direction we're going exactly. Yeah. Um, but and we I, I do want to fill out I want to spread the show out across more people um, and have people take on more defined roles um, and I've been talking to a few other people um, about getting involved with the show so we can kind of spread the workload so we can make sure another season happens um, mm-hmm. and I think when we have more people contributing to the show directly I think it might go in new and interesting directions. Um, but I think we should we should say we didn't say this anywhere. The break is definitely going to be two months. Uh, there's definitely we're not going to record any new episodes yeah. of the podcast uh, between now and October. At least, at least, yeah. We're definitely taking a two month break for my sake, so I can get used to my new school schedule. I can figure out um, living in Florida. I've never done a major move before, um, and I I know that the program has a pretty high uh, time commitment uh, weekly. Um, But then after that, after two months, we're planning on uh, starting the conversation of what we're going to do next. Mm -hmm. And then from there, we'll figure out how much more time we need before we start the show. So hypothetically, it could start again as early as late October. But right now, I'm seeing January as the most reasonable start date if we're able to do another season. Right. And then yeah. of course if if so, like if if something happens and it's just undoable, we'll still do some kind of episode explaining that. Um if that were to happen and letting you guys know how long it would be before the show comes back. But mm-hmm. in the meantime there will be video content. We will be using the channel and the social media pages for more things related and also some of the other projects we're working on might be hosted through Verse the World. So, yeah. Do we have anything else we want to get on this? I don't think so. I think, um, well, I think the biggest thing, um, you know, all jokes aside, is kind of a sincere thank you to all the people who have listened because I think it has su- constantly surprised us. Like, yeah, you definitely. Know, I mean, I think this was something that's fun, and that's kind of what it always is, is it's just an interesting, fun thing, and we never expected, you know, it could have zero listens an episode, and we'd still probably have done everything uh, the same in the sense of, like, it's just a, it's a way we've kind of improved ourselves and have been, like, in, dived into our interests, but that's what's so shocking is like 700 downloads is pretty crazy for us. And, and so we're really appreciative to the people who have listened a lot and the friends who have given us good feedback and And um, support, uh, the people who talk to us regularly about it. Um, and I definitely, I would say for me, I don't know what your thoughts are on this, but I think if we hadn't seen so much support and we hadn't seen, um, I don't know so much not necessarily feedback because we see some, but not as like, we'd like to know more what people think about the show. Uh, so we could respond to it a little bit more, react to it a little bit more and maybe tweak the show here and there, depending on what people think about it. But we've definitely seen a response. Like there's a, there's a, a lot more people listening to it than we expected, uh, even at the outset. And I, I think for me, I wouldn't be planning on a season three at this point. This would probably be where verse the end would, versus the world would end uh for my interests um i don't think i would have conti- i don't think i would continue and do a season three with the workload if it wasn't for all the support um and the fact that there's somebody out there listening and enjoying this regularly so yeah sincere heartfelt thank you to everyone who's listening to this everyone who supports the show uh and a very sp- uh, specific and special thank you uh to nick barons Luke Corporage, Emily Whittaker, and uh, Jacob Barons for all being 
regular listeners and supporters. We see you guys like Vicky. Almost. Oh yeah, Vicky. Vicky, she's always giving us feedback originally. Vicky, thank you for all the support and uh, the direct commentary on <laughs> on so many episodes. Yeah. Um, also, Liz Loeffler. Um, there's been a lot of you that we just we regularly see you like. Very and cool. Everything yeah. we post. And there's probably people we're missing that like have been. Um, this sounds like an Oscar acceptance thing, but like like <laughs> Ethan Cole Craig and, Rob, thanks, and guys. like there's just a lot of people who are like who have been very supportive and you know bring it mention it a lot and oh and I I would like to thank this might be a, a pointless thing but I would like to thank each and every guest we've uh, had yeah. on I'd like to thank uh, Cole Robert Todd uh, Zane Zane Evan. Uh, Thanks for coming on, man. I hope your podcast is going well. We're still looking forward to to hearing from you on that. Um, man. Evan, who, thank you, uh, Evan, for coming <laughs> on. Eric, uh, thanks for making biggest, it all the way out yeah, to do big, a yeah, episode. Yeah. Well, especially Eric for he's like kind of been the one, you know, the engine that's been making everything happen. And then also, yeah, for real, like Evan has always been like the fill in guy that we have come in when we do like a guest drops out or something. So yeah. like, yeah, he's always like willing to just like, you know, just pop a mic in front of me. Let's do it. I'm going to tell you about my weird dream realities. He, he was weird like dream dimensions before this episode, there was a, a hilarious back and forth of whether he was going to be on mic or not. <laughs> he had no reason to be for this, but he was just, well, if you want to put a mic in front of me, do it. If you don't, don't. Uh, hold on one second. I want to go into our episode list and double check that we didn't miss anybody. I know we're, I know we are, but I, can't. I know we're oh, missing uh, KJ. people. Oh, yeah, KJ. Hey, buddy, if you're listening to this. That was one this, of our good rest episodes, probably. Yeah, thank you so much for coming out. Uh, Jacob, Jacob Barons, thank you for doing that one. Uh, Predestination Free Will. Oh, that was... Uh, oh, at Tam. 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 Tam Daniel Deckard. Hey, buddy. Thank you so much <laughs> yeah, for coming out. Yeah, that was out. a great episode. You're also one of our on. regular supporters. Thank you uh, to you and your lovely wife. Yeah, that was great. Man, I forgot. Wow, we've done so many of them now. Yeah. Yeah. Probably half of them with guests. Uh, Daniel Willis. Thank you so yes, much, man. Yes, yes. That was a cool one. Uh, was anybody on social media versus the world, or was that just you and me? What do you mean? Uh, season two, episode five, we did social media versus the world. Oh, no. That was just me, you, and Evan. Was it? Okay, good. Yeah. Yeah. And, of course, Nick Barron's official biggest fan of the show. Uh, thank you so much. I bumped into him recently. I'm pretty sure he was blackout drunk, but he was able to identify <laughs> me, and he he made me promise that uh, we will do another update video when we start season three with him. So I'm putting my word out there now. Yeah. We'll do another fan versus the world with Nick yes. Barrett because that was just such that a was fun the, time. One of the best ones. Yeah. Um, and thank you f to all of our friends and family who've uh, supported this. It's a weirder project than we've done before. Uh, it's a harder project to to um, support because even if you're just going to listen to an episode, it's like an hour to two hours. Yeah. So thank you for everyone who's made it through a full and episode. And a lot of incoherent rambling throughout any of them. Especially this episode. This yeah. episode is so masturbatorial at this point. Yeah, it's really laid back. Well, I hope it, I hope it comes off, maybe it comes off masturbatorial, but it's definitely more appreciative, I would say. Yeah. I think that should, I would hopefully be the vibe. Yeah. Um, we don't always know what we're doing, but uh, the fact that you guys seem to enjoy it um jesus christ <laughs> we'll probably edit this out but no we're leaving this in i was evan, trying to say that evan, caleb was trying to be very heartfelt <laughs> and evan just looks over evan's been in the room the whole time you know a uh, view behind the curtain here but he's he looks just at sitting his here vaping the whole time yeah and he just at me looks at his shoe there's just a weird <laughs> It's like a, a <laughs> Pizza Hut pepper packet stuck to his shoe, and he just he peels it off and looks the, at it, it weirdly. It makes the most like intense sound effect as he peels it <laughs> off his foot, and then he just tries not to laugh at the height of the episode. Oh, man. Uh, All right. Well, I think that probably wraps it up. Do you got any, any final farewells or anything? I don't think so. Um but can we do a little... Uh, well, we'll do that here in a second. Let's uh, go ahead and run through the... Oh, shit. I don't want to pay for anything. 
Uh, let's quickly go. This is devolving the, quickly. All the social media it's really handles. Really, homage to hey, the rest of our episodes. <laughs> everybody, thank you so much for listening. Uh, if you want to support us, uh, the website is the easiest way to find all of our stuff. Um, and definitely, if you guys uh, want to support us at all, grab any of that merch. That would really help us out. Uh, but other places you can follow us, you can follow us on YouTube at VS The World. Facebook, Matt and Caleb vs. The World. Spotify, Matt and Caleb vs. The World. That is the easiest place uh, outside of the website to listen to the show. I actually think the website's easier to listen to it. Um, on Instagram, you can follow it at Verse The World Pod. Uh, we'll probably keep the, the Instagram running all through the break as best as we can. Either me or Matt will be updating it. I think we're going to start using it uh, more and more for just funny, funny, weird on on the spot content. If you want to get in contact with us, suggest episode ideas um, or anything, you can hit us at our Gmail, uh, verse the world pod at gmail dot com. And uh, yeah, oh, very special thanks. Uh, hopefully, if you if you didn't hear your name in the thank you section, hopefully you made it this this much further into the episode. I want to give a very special thank you to. Uh, it's Patricia, right? Patricia Middleton? Yeah. That's the name? Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. I was going to bring that up earlier. Yeah. Special thank you to Patricia Middleton. That was so cool uh, just reaching out, contacting us, uh, and uh, doing the interview and everything. Um, that actually helped us out a lot. Uh, and it was really cool to see our faces in a newspaper and not yeah. for a crime this time. So right. thank you so much for everything you did. We really appreciate it. Mm-hmm. All right. Well... Since this is the final episode, let's go ahead and wrap it out like we do here at every episode with the uh, end of the end of the world song. goodbye song. Goodbye, everybody who listens to our show. Shit. <laughs> 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 I'm so embarrassed and I hope no one listens this far. <laughs> and I apologize to everyone that we, <laughs> that we just thanked. <laughs>